Hello again, or hello for the first time. Today, we're at the airport, but we're not going on a flight. We're actually here to see the Syracuse Regional Aviation Museum, which is in the terminal, so let's go. I know we didn't just arrive here, but what's the point in coming to Hancock International if you can't get a picture with a big SYR behind you? There's some big letters. I think out of all the updates they did to the uh, airport, this is probably the coolest. That's so neat. Yeah, last time I was in here, we were going to Orlando quite a while ago. At least it's kind of warm today out there for February. Here's an informational kiosk, and this is what we're here to see. Museum and Poetry in Flight. That's a uh, another exhibit they have, but the museum is actually a permanent thing here. Yeah, there we go. That's nice. That first thing we're greeted with here is, uh, as the sign says here, U.S. Air Force Dress Blues from 1949 to 1965. This was worn by uh, William Bill Willoughby, who was born in Salve in 1923. U.S. Army Air Corps Uniform Dress Jacket. Look at this old photo. This museum uh, is put on by Onondaga Historical Association, which is a nonprofit museum in downtown Syracuse. And Onondaga is the county that Syracuse is the uh, county seat of. So. Let's go look at this. There's a big aviation history in Syracuse. And I don't know if uh, a lot of people know about it, but we're gonna find out a little bit about it right now. The one thing OHA does really well is these exhibits like this. It's a leather flying helmet. Ultimeter. And this was produced in Rochester. And there's a photo of Amelia Earhart flying over Syracuse in 1931. With SU, ESF, and Oakwood Cemetery below her. Some notable periods in time. Look at that, 1924. First air mail delivery to Syracuse. Speaking of air mail service, this uh, paragraph here points out on the top of the barn where it says Syracuse Airport that helps pilots find where their, their destination was. I get the place right. Whole history of the airport. It's E. Hancock, that's uh, the airport's named after. Since he was born in Syracuse in 1885, graduated from New York Law School, and was admitted to the bar in 1908, saw active duty during World War I in France, awarded the Silver Star for bravery. A sign here says this is a Pan American flight attendant uniform. Classy. Pan Am captain uniform. The uh, accompanying hat. So 
timeline military aviation notable dates and over here World War II A2 Navy flight jacket Dr. Jeanette Epps is a local. Graduated from Cochrane High School in 1988. And got a BS in physics from Le Moyne in 1992. This display case has a, a bunch of photos and facts. This is the U.S. Army conducting anti aircraft lighting at Amboy Airport. Syracuse Aero Test Plane, 1923. Here's a uh, Sensenic wooden propeller. Sorry if I messed that up. 1938. Made from laminated maple and birch. American Airlines flagship fleet pitcher. Ad for cement. And that's a picture of uh, Hancock Terminal back in 1965. And then Richard Nixon at the airport, 1960. All kinds of other stuff here. Logbook. Patches from the 174th SU graduate Colonel Eileen Collins was born in Elmira. She became the first female pilot of the space shuttle. She flew a Discovery on the first joint Russian-American flight. Franklin Automobile in here had a uh, pretty cool hood ornament. So it was a uh, pretty big automobile company out of Syracuse for quite a while. And the reason why this is in here, so air-cooled motors were utilized in many aircraft, including Charles Lindbergh's The Spirit of St. Louis. After Lindbergh's successful transatlantic flight in May of 1927, he became one of the most famous men in the world. William Leninger uh, convinced Lucky Lindy to accept a Franklin automobile as a gift. A hub of innovation. I actually have an oscilloscope. Look at this old photo of runway lighting. Some Syracuse, China from American Airlines. And here's a stewardess uniform from Pan American 1975 to 1980. That's pretty stylish. Look at that hat. Flight Service Handbook. A whole bunch of models here of different airplanes. Some touch screens next to them. And jets. A-10 Thunderbolt. So you can learn some different things. That's pretty wild. I 
guess if you're tired of models, you can look right out. Right out there. Look at all these people busy. Getting luggage. And there's a segment over here about sustainability and uh, different things about the construction of the building, air quality, and then over here it says that approximately 875,000 gallons of rainwater are captured and that water is used in the uh, toilets. It's uh, dyed blue so that you know that it's rainwater, but look at that tank. That is huge. Wow. I really have to say this is kind of a really interesting time here at the airport. It's a free museum and it costs uh, it's about six dollars to park uh, for under an hour, uh, hour to two hours. You pay uh, eight dollars I think it said. But yeah, there's a lot of interesting displays in there. Uh, I didn't expect to see an automobile, uh, but of course they had the air-cooled engine in it, used also in helicopters and things like that. So it's an obvious part of uh, aviation history in Syracuse. Seeing all the uniforms, all the different things and uh, displays and galleries of like the plates and all that. But uh, yeah, pretty, pretty a yeah, pretty interesting time here at the Syracuse airport. So thanks for joining me today and we'll see you on our next road trip.